Hi everyone and welcome to Founded Beauty. I'm your host Akash Mehta, also the CEO and co-founder of the hair wellness brand Fable and Main. And together we'll uncover the stories behind the beauty entrepreneurs who built some of the biggest brands in the industry. Hope Smith is a philanthropist, author, licensed esthetician, former model, and founder and CEO of Mother a range of luxury skincare and personal care products that conceptualized while Hope was pregnant with her first child. Mother is committed to nurturing and nourishing our bodies like a mother would. The brand launched in 2019 with its now best-selling body butter and body oil and aligns its products to meet every cycle and every stage of our ever-evolving lives. Hope has been listed amongst WWD's Beauty's emerging brand founders and Forbes' inspiring females in the beauty industry and has been noted for her humanitarian efforts with organizations including Together We Rise and the International Medical Corps. I am so excited to sit down with her today and learn all about her journey today and also what's in store for Mother. So Hope, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. So I asked all my guests the same question. I'm going to ask you, who in a nutshell is hope. Ooh. Um, I think that a lot of my identity is now tied to motherhood. Um, like my brand originated with mother. Um, so I am a mother, but I do try to maintain, you know, that fun, vibrant life. So you have to find inspiration elsewhere. Um, and so who am I? I am a business person, a friend, a mother, you know, it's just all encompassing. Well, yes. yes. I love that. Um, so I always first start with um, kind of like taking a walk down memory lane. And I think the first early memories of beauty that I feel are so intrinsically rooted in our values today. Um, so I would love to know some of those early memories of beauty that you can remember growing up. Gosh. Um, so I had a Nana, grandmother, and her vanity was always open for me. I was allowed to play in it. I was allowed to play with the perfumes and the eyeliners, the, you know, high heels, the hats, the jewelry. And I know I'd walk out of the bedroom and she wouldn't be home and somebody would go, you've been in her things. And she'd get home and say, no, 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 it's for her. It's for her. And so, you know, I, I have always played with beauty. I've always loved beauty, whether it's cosmetics and makeup or hair products or hair tools or fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always been that. And there, it goes back to lipstick and a certain perfume. And it takes me right back to being four years old in the bathroom. Yeah. And, and I think it's those early memories that you share with your loved ones. Like for me and my grandma, um, it, you know, you don't really take, you take it for granted when you're younger because it's just what you're used to, right? But then when you look back and you really remember those memories, there's are some of the fondest memories we had with our family, our loved ones. And it often is rooted in rituals um, or, and then that's what we get connected to. And I think that's what's so exciting about the beauty industry today is people sharing these stories that why they are creating brands or why they are creating products. It's, it's to continue that legacy, that timeless sense of beauty um, and and memories that come through these products. Um, but uh, one thing I want to, I guess, go into is you had a very impressive uh, career and uh, I know it heightened in, in a lot of, I mean, I can't even name the successes you had because it's just, it's going to be a whole podcast. Um, but if you could summarize your, your first year modeling career and some of those kind of, um, I guess, key lessons that you learned throughout it. So I signed with Wilhelmina when I was 16 years old. So I finished high school early. I had went on this like accelerated program in order to do it. And I moved to New York city at that time. Um, uh, my first, you know, job, the big job that I booked, the first one that let me kind of stay in New York city and not have to go home and study was I, you know, I was there six months and it was time to go home to my small town in Texas. And I booked a, six city world tour for Versace. And during that, you know, we were having conversations around that time where it was like, okay, it's time to come home. You have to start studying. Um, And it kind of gave me this, uh, it sustained me for a time and gave me an argument um, that, you know, this, I was getting paid as much as my, you know, parents made in a year for the six, seven city tours. So I said, no, let me stay. Let me try. Like, I'm not ready to go home. Like I wanted, this is more exciting. Like, let me keep trying. And so 
that really propelled. And after that, I had, you know, Patek, the watch brand and just different, you know, editorial campaigns. And, but that was kind of my first break in New York. Wow. And did you, um, was it tough? Because you started so young and then obviously going to New York City. Was it, was, did you think it like really helped build your confidence um, from a very young age, which obviously today as an entrepreneur, we, we, you know, it's very valuable, but yeah, was it, was it tough at times? Definitely tough at times, but because I was young, I realized how scary the world was and I didn't put myself in a bunch of the situations that I could have found myself in because I was still very scared of the world. I knew how badly and how quickly something could go wrong. And so I lived in this, you know, timid space, watching everything, pretending to be this confident woman, but also knowing I was the youngest person in the room and almost any room that I ended up in for a while, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And observing. And I, I, when I, I used to do the same when I used to work at Dior and I was a very young uh, manager compared to most of the other people out there. And then I just used to spend my time listening, but there's actually so much power in observing and listening and staying in the shadows a bit and then eventually coming out. But if you go too soon out, you, it can be quite over consuming and you can lose yourself. So I think it's important to be patient when you're young and in places where perhaps you are quite different or not you don't feel seen it's okay mm -hmm. to you know stay a bit quiet for a bit longer until you feel it's, it's the right time you know I had to learn to speak up because I was so used yeah. to being the listener in the room and not confident mm. enough that I could really add value to the conversation at the time so there's a lot of time spent listening and then you had to read and then you learn to share yeah. what you know and speak up you know yeah, it's so true. No, it's, it, even I'm thinking about it. It's like we don't often talk about those things, but it's like there is there is a sense of um, yeah connection in a lot of people's journeys when it comes to those things, uh, especially when it comes to age, because you know you, you feel sometimes when you're too young, you don't have that confidence that you have to learn, and and, and you have to f sometimes fake it till you make it, right? You have to like 100%. You, you have to try. But I know you um, in 2005 you opened your first business, which was um, also when you I think you were doing your esthetician license. Um, so can you tell us a bit about your first venture with the med spa? Sure. I always had an interest in beauty. I didn't want to go to four-year university. It would have put me back living outside of New York City and I wanted to be able to model. So I had this compromise. I was like, I'll, I'll, I want to just study skin and let me go and like do this esthetician program. And it was like more of a license and um, I don't want to leave New York City. So I went through that program and then I had money and almost nowhere to spend it. I lived, I was for a little bit in a, like these model dorms and hadn't bought a place yet. And I had to place money somewhere. Well, when I became an esthetician, I became obsessed with lasers. This is t over 20 years ago. So oh, it was yeah. early in like the laser space. So I was trained to do like laser hair removal, laser vein removal, um, like these non-surgical kind of facelifts that you were doing with lasers at the time. Um, breaking up cellulite, just different things. And um, so I decided it was going to be a medical spa. I was 21 years old, sitting across from different medical directors or doctors, where I would pitch, I need a medical director in order to buy these lasers. I want to open a medical spa. This is what I'm proposing, a whole business plan at 21 years old. Now, I don't have any traditional business schooling. I finished high school early. I had a dream and I loved skincare and that was it. What at now almost 40, I think about it and I'm like, wait, what was I thinking? Having any kind of confidence to walk into a doctor's office, sit across from him and pitch this business where I'm saying sign off on these clients so that they can come into, you know, my medical facility and I'm overseeing this place. Like it's, it's wild crazy. when I look back at it. It's crazy, yeah. but I was naive enough to think I can, and then I could, and it, you, you know, did. ended up being a medical spa, and yeah. Isn't that also fascinating how we can we can look back at our younger selves and learn so much as well? Like it's so because uh, even me, I I'm just thinking like, sometimes. How, like that's insane. I didn't actually realize how young you were. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> but, cringy. Um, it's like yeah. it's cringy in a way when but I look back. I'm it's like beautiful. these doctors, it's, but I had a doctor yeah. that believed in me and exactly. trusted me enough to do it, and exactly. so that propelled and other it. dreams. 
Yes. Exactly. Oh, that's so, so exciting. Can you first tell me where's when the, when, when the first seed of mother started and how you ended up starting? So I became pregnant with my first child. Yeah. The first thing I thought about was maybe, oh my God, I'm going to have a baby. This is real. But the very next thing was stretch marks. So mm-hmm. like we talked about the things you remember from childhood. I remember my mother being very insecure about her stretch marks. Mm-hmm. And I remember it on my grandmother too. And that's on my dad's side and mother's side. And they were like covered in them from pregnancy and they never embraced them. And there wasn't like the self love where it's like, Oh, well, you know, now you've got so much positivity around it, but I didn't grow up hearing that positivity. So it's something like I immediately thought about and I wanted to help prevent. So I've always known that, you know, stretch marks are genetic and hereditary and always heard all of it. But I said, what can I do to prevent them? What can I do to lessen what I may might have got? What can I do to just have a better outcome? Yeah. I had a whole Excel spreadsheet. I had it broke down like what of these like plants and botanicals and things are high naturally in certain vitamins. So I balanced it all out with like the linoleic acid versus like other fatty acids, like vitamins A and you know, all of this. And I didn't want to use like the same butters. And so I went through this whole journey. I was ordering raw ingredients in my kitchen. Yeah. I, um, well, before I got to that point, I had researched everything that was at our luxury stores, like a burger of Goodman, even Marcus Sachs. Then I went to drugstore and I said, okay, well, if they have this marketing ingredient on the fact on the front of the label, on the IL, where does it actually sit? What's the 1% line? What's the 5%? As an esthetician, I kind of could always figure out your 1% for sure. But like, even like, I know what goes in at what levels. So if there's something that you never use more than 3% or two and a half, I immediately find that. And if your marketing ingredients that you're using on the front of your label is sitting, you know, way, way down there, and I know it could be higher, I'm kind of not impressed. So we're going to you know, build this product. So I'm in the kitchen, Mm -hmm. I'm ordering raws, but these, you know, vendors aren't selling them to me in normal, like make it for your, just yourself sizes. So I had like five gallons of this and all of this, you know, raw ingredients. So I made so many different versions of, you know, our first body butter. Uh Um, During that time, a year and a half, two years later, I've made it for myself. I successfully was stretch mark free with my first. So successfully stretch mark free with my second. But during that time, I started sending it to friends because when I would make a batch, it was like jars. Because I, yeah. I was just using so much. I had so much and I'd send it out for, for nothing. I'd pay for the shipping and I'd send it to friends, people that I knew were pregnant, just to use people that weren't pregnant, just to use as, you know, a really nice, rich, waterless body butter. Um, and some of those people ended up being Cassandra Gray from Violet Gray. Mm. So she used it during her pregnancy. And like, it wasn't a brand though. It was literally me doing it for myself, you know, and it's since become a lot, you know, the process of making it has totally changed to get that kind of texture. You know, now it's down to the humidity in the room and what temperature you're mixing, what, you know, it's much more complicated now, but that's how it started. And that's, for me, that's the, the, I love these stories because it's like the brand wasn't created from a boardroom, right? From a profit, it's created from a real why and uh, and a very wholesome why. I'm very fortunate to go to one of your dinners and got to meet you, but also, you know, receive the products and your products are phenomenal. Like they are your body butter. I, I remember I use a body butter, body oil. And I, I do have also stretch marks from like losing weight, um, you know, quite quickly and, 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 and et cetera. And they've helped me so much. Um, so I do want to like give some time to talk about the products and if you can tell me about the ritual and also a bit more about I guess what makes them so special sure um thank you for saying all that I'm also a fan of Fable and Maine so you're in my bathroom upstairs um in my vanity cabinets and I'm obsessed with and I've had such growth I have to pause because I've had such growth because I use the roots and the pre-shampoo and all of this so we are in skin and then we're in body as an esthetician it's been it was really important that as we developed a body brand we are body line we also were doing skin so for body um 
we're about to launch a product and it's a, you know, shower product, but we have our body exfoliating um, scrub and I use that in the shower. It's so, so rich that honestly, when I use it, I don't really have to move on to body butter, but when you don't use it, I'll go straight to body butter or I'll do the oil. I've been obsessed with the oil and I go in and out of like what I'm obsessed with, but right now it's the body oil, even though the body butter is really great too. Um, and then we're talking about what makes them special. I guess when you're formulating for yourself with a goal, you're not focused on your price per piece or any of the business side. I was literally formulating in the most selfish way in the most vain way for myself. So when we made a body oil, you know, it's very, very costly to put like organic rosehip oil as your number one ingredient. It's rich, it's heavy, it's beautiful. So, you know, vitamin rich. There's so many beautiful things about it, but that now is my obsession, the body oil. And uh, in terms of like your, when you created Mother, like uh, people have a path for distribution and, you know, you mentioned your friend Violet Gray and stuff like, where did you know you wanted Mother to be? Like, you know, you created the products, now the journey starts. Like, how did you think about launching it? When I launched, I had the, the dream that it would be direct to consumer. And I wouldn't really branch out for a period of time. And I was going to really focus on our internal team, getting our operations right. And only when we're truly ready, head out to these retailers. Um, so we have been very slow with retailers. Our yeah. um, slow and intentionally slow, not in sales, but in... Um, yeah. Yes, intentionally slow with um, because it's just a journey. Um yeah. I can say 80% of our business is still on that direct to consumer um, platform. So 80% of people still are coming straight to the website and that we have brands will love that. Um, but the number one goal for me to launch with when we first launched the brand was I really wanted Violet Gray. So that Violet Gray has mm-hmm. had so many changes at this point now by being sold to Farfetch. Like there's a whole Violet Gray journey, but Violet Gray five years ago was yeah. not sold. And, you know, it, it was just something that I wanted. I wanted that Violet Code stamp of approval. I thought that it was an organic way to launch the business because Cassandra was an actual user during her own pregnancy. Yeah. She vouched for it to so many people in her Rolodex before it was a brand. She'd say, you have to get this like formula and it's in she will send it to you. And it was just like excess product that I was constantly still making for myself. My husband has eczema. So I was, I kept making it past my pregnancies for him. And so I still had product and she would ask for it for these really big, you know, profile, high profile personalities. And I'm like, wow, this must be something. And honestly, it ended up in a lab because of two people. It was Cassandra Gray who kept asking for product for her, you know, Rolodex of friends and my husband who has eczema and I might have forgot my own dream and never made it a brand because I had con- I had mastered what I wanted to do for my own personal goals around pregnancy so I wasn't thinking about it as much and not making I was, it wasn't about making it a brand I kept making it because two people kept asking for more product and then eventually I was tired of making it and it ended up as this like very authentic start to yeah. the business and that's always the best. I think you need to find your champions as well as you build a brand around you that also want to see it grow and help you on that journey. Because like, it, you have to be very intentional, but also it can be quite lonely as well. Like sometimes to not know, you know, do I go left, right, forward, diagonal? Oh, yeah. There's so many routes we could do. Um, but you do need sometimes that push, right? From people that believe in it too and help you. Absolutely. Um, and then a network of people to call or to be in like, these beauty exactly. groups that we have, right? So, yeah. you know, there's so many different beauty groups and you go and you say, okay, do you like X, Y, and Z for Australia or who's your distributor yeah, exactly. here or where are you sold in Germany? You know, and it, it really, helps. it helps and it helps build, you have to have that community and network and beauty. 
I agree. And, and, and that's something that, you know, I, that's why I, I created this po- the podcast when I launched, because it was a way for, honestly, uh, you know, I never dreamt, I don't, I don't really listen to podcasts. I don't really, I just did this because I wanted to make friends. I was like, it's so lonely. I used to work in corporate beauty. I left corporate beauty and I was like, um, how do I get to m- make more friends in the industry and help each other and grow with each other? I was like, podcast is perfect because I get to chat with them for an hour. And then after the real fun starts, so like, that's the point here, right? Like after this episode, we'll like help each other and grow together and that's what I really want um the industry to do um and it's important to do because uh we all win when we all rise together and I really mean people say this and it's like it sounds like a quote and a magnet but really like it's reality um and it's it's very crucial and you can also learn from every single size like it doesn't matter if you're a hundred million dollar brand or just starting there's something to learn from everyone um and that's what i think i wanted to really do is like a very equal kind of equitable place where people can just feel heard and seen not like sense of hierarchy in sizes which sometimes the retail landscape can do you know investors can do like there are stakeholders out there that can make you feel lesser or restricted um because of numbers or because of size or but i think founders should never do that to each other um that's like very very important for me because we all are at different stages of our journey and uh, it's very important to to respect that and to nourish it um so that's very important to me but one thing that's also very important to me is impact and making uh, an impact in the world we live in and that's something you guys do uh, really uh, as well and uh, can you talk a bit about some of your initiatives and the the percentage of donations to nonprofits that you guys work with sure i love our you know partners so we partnered with international medical forum and they're mm-hmm. worldwide. They go, you know, on the ground when anything is happening, whether it's a natural crisis or humanities, you know, war, epidemics, they're on the ground. And we give 5% of all sales back to them. And I put it, you know, they, they have flexibility to use it wherever they want, but I mm-hmm. do encourage the education of midwives and nurses in these two and three year programs that we fund. So mm. I personally had two home births and I had a midwife and I just really love midwives and that whole birth community. And there are places, you know, in these third world countries where we're able to take, you know, people out of their villages. And this is places where there's one doctor for 65,000 people. So for him to attend a birth, it's just not really happening. Um, and people are dying from these very, these, these issues that we don't think about here in the U.S. And there's you know, silly ways to, you know, it's just we can take care of this problem. And so yeah. we pull people out of their community. We send them to school in these two and three year programs to either be a nurse or a midwife. And then when we give them the tools and equipment that they need to go back into their communities and they always go back into their villages and communities, they never say, oh, I'm not going home to like be with my family. I'm going to go explore somewhere else. They always end up in their own communities. And then they're mm-hmm. kind of the caretaker for women and then the newborn early life for their, you know, their home, their, their families, mm-hmm. their communities, their village. That's, and does it like, is that one of the big drivers, I guess, to, to grow the business? Cause the more you grow, the more you, you make impact. Is, is oh. that like a, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it, we right? have, you have, you yeah, have to, and, have it, to. and it, it creates this sustainable mo- model where, you know, you can fundraise or you can, they can do so many fundraisers, right. In Los Angeles or mm-hmm. wherever they're doing yeah. things, but, but how much do you spend on an event? And, Mm -hmm. you know, how much are you actually taking away versus building this sustainable model where year over year you have growth, your donation is getting larger. It's, it's nice. And your awareness is constantly growing. Like that's one thing that, um, what I've, what I kind of have done as a way to make me grow is I, I, I know my limits and building a brand is, is going to be, um, I'm not fully driven by profits more purpose in my whole life and that probably won't make me sometimes the best entrepreneur unless I have a cause that's even deeper than than profit right and for me I've actually built a fund um called the fable fund um that's with my sister and my plan is when I when I exit majority of the the sale will go to the fund and that's why I've worked so hard to get the revenue up and the you know healthy every time everything is because I know it's going to help a greater cause so you got to find as a 
as an entrepreneur, what drives you? Um, and it doesn't have to come from a place of ego. It comes from so many other ways, right? And, um, and then you, you'll, you'll be more successful even later on. Um, and I think that's why these things are, are crucial, um, and it's, and sustainable. Exactly to your point. It's the perfect word when it comes to these nonprofit, um, initiatives. Um, so I, I love that. Um, so that, I'm excited to see how, how yeah. my, my mother grows more, what you, you guys are going to do in the space. But in terms of like also product, I know you mentioned wash and stuff, but what sort of that you can share, uh, on the horizon for mother, where do you see, like, is it global expansion? Is it eventually retail? What's on the cards that you're hoping to, to tackle? So retailers, we, retailers, we are definitely now pushing forward with all, pretty much all of them. Um, Amazing. But expansion, we recently, we, we went into the UK a year ago, we went to Germany six or eight months ago. We're going into Australia. So now we're ready to start yes. that, you know, exciting. but it took, yeah, yeah it, it's really exciting. We have quite a few US retailers, um, yeah. but the push begins. It's now, now is the time we are ready. Amazing. I make, yeah. well, make sure if you ever need to pick up a phone, I can tell you some of my, uh, I'm an open book. I share everything, my margins, whatever you want. And, uh, I, I can that. definitely help a little bit with certain markets, especially the, 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 the markets that I feel like are really driving growth from like Middle East and, you know, um, uh, India. And there's some, there's some markets that we don't end up going to straight away, but if you get in there early, you, you're Middle in. East so, is on my list. Uh, my husband's yeah. pushing. He's always. <laughs> You know, asking like, for Middle East. Yes. Yeah. And he's specifically oh. like saying, go, go, go. Because he's spent so much time in the Middle East, whether it's like yeah. fundraising or, so. um, yeah. It's a, I'm actually going to Dubai like in a few days. So yeah, anytime we'll talk offline, oh. I got you there, but, sure. um, yeah. Thank but you. Uh, that's exciting. And then one thing as well, which I bought yesterday, so it's going to come in my post, but you're, you published a book. So I'm super excited to talk a bit about that. Um, and, uh, when I meet you in person, I want it to be signed, please. Uh, cause it's, oh, I, 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 it's such a cool thing. I think when people have, uh, yeah written a book that will always stay forever. I mean, products stay also, but a book is a very cool accomplishment. But tell us a bit about um, your book, Your Body is Magic. So like I do these deep dives, right, into skincare. Like if I'm making a vitamin C serum, it's like, it's like a deep, 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 deep dive, right? Same for body butter. Yeah. What body butter has an Excel spreadsheet for it? You know, it's just a deep dive. So when I was pregnant, I, you know, I loved my midwife. I was with a traditional OBGYN for the first um, half of the pregnancy. At 20 weeks, I interviewed a midwife. I learned more in the interview with the midwife, which was two hours long, than I had learned about my body and the journey it was on from every visit week, you know, six to week 20 with my mm. OBGYN. So I said, wow, if I learned all of this in two years, like what else is there? So I would mm. take so many notes. I would gather paperwork. I was reading every birth book on the market and I would like highlight or tear out pages of things. So I gathered all of this, you know, uh, resources and I um, ended it pregnancy. So, you know, I had this great birth and I ended up with this like box full of things. I wasn't ready to get rid of. I couldn't quite like give the box to like my sister who was going to give birth next because it's so disorganized and it's like highlighted and I only knew how to read my handwriting. And so yeah. it ended up being this project where I, I'm getting all of this info and I'm like trying to, you know, write a book and where do I plug this? And what is the old, you know, midwifery trick for things like it's you encounter during labor and, you yeah. know, pregnancy and like these old generations and centuries old information. And so it ended up in a book. And I, I used little that. pieces and I had my midwife um, come in and share it too. So I did it with Mary Michael Potter, a midwife in Austin. And it was just my way of being like, check, that's done. Yeah. And then yeah. sometimes I even forget I did it. Like, it's you know, so like cool. when you no, start no, it, yeah. I, you just forget about it. But I, you know, was, I'm not, I'm not even your target audience, happened. but I'm excited to, to give it a read. Yeah, because I, I just <laughs> well, think, you know, there's so much we can read. learn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm going to, and, and I just want to like, um, it's, it's so much to learn about, you know, I, I'm, I think it's um, really important that someone has gone through something and has 
taken a lot of lessons and is able to synthesize it in a very concrete way. It just helps so many people out there. And again, similar to mother, right? Like you, you did this for someone, right? That might need it. And then you ended up realizing, oh, this is something I can create like a book or a product. Uh, so the, again, the attention is very pure and, 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 and honest, which I love as well. Uh, so it's really cool. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to, to give it a go, but yeah, um, it's, uh, something you should be very proud of. Don't, don't forget it. It's Thank very, you. very, it's Thank very exciting. Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to start wrapping up and going to fire round questions. I have a few just last just general kind of questions. So I think my first main thing is if you are going to give like one key takeaway that, you know, listeners, you know, you've had a lot of different experiences, but um, what is one thing that you would say um, right now from just reflecting on this conversation that you would hope people take away from our conversation today? Ooh, um, mother, you know, doesn't exist necessarily as a brand it exists because we had a real need and mm. you know as much as you can get you know awards or win beauty products or get named on certain lists right it all doesn't matter because it's actually about a need and actually we do want to help people and women so that would mm. be it because it's I love that. so much more than a brand for me you know it just it's, it's just it's yeah it's and, all that other uh, stuff is just how do you stay there like uh that that is so important and it's something that like i'm also listening for me how do you stay uh, accountable to that because you know as you grow and you build more we start to sometimes lose our way because of you know things oh. happen right how would how do you as hope stay accountable to that um i have to fight with my operations side off I have to tell them, no, we're going to spend the extra money. It has to be this way. You know, yeah. you, you can't lose track. I cannot get involved track. in, I do not want to be part of the operations and I do not want to be sit with like, you know, in the P&Ls and all of that because it, it messes with my mission. It messes with everything, yeah. you know, that I, I, my job is to do something else. I and agree. that's to create uh, like really, that. really good products that actually improve my own quality of life skin whether it's like my skin or it fixes a problem that i have on, happening on my body right mm. um whether it's eczema or like whatever the problem is my job is not to go look at and distract me with those numbers and i was distracted with it at first i was mm. you know so focused on the year over year growth and like this and that it's like don't i, I can't get involved in it it gives me anxiety i have to stay in my lane I'm the same. I, I think this is, I think this is the problem though, when you have a founder and CEO title, right? Like both of us, it's like, there's an arm of our, there's a, there's a hat in our head that we need to be, you know, understanding every little nooks and cracks of every company and you need to understand the p and and the profit and this, but at the same time, we've got to be founders. We've got to have a vision. We've got to have something deeper than just a uh, profit, you know, and it gets hard. It gets hard, but I think the, the secret source is you can still be a founder CEO, but you have to have the right team under you that let them do it, but let them also listen and be willing to hold that space for what your vision is um yeah. that's the crucial it's, part yeah. that balance is really hard it's it hard it's and hard. i have a good partner and um so good. he understands it and we're able to like go at it with each other in a very fun way um nice. and i hear him and he hears me and we eventually get to a place but we've been around so now fire around questions and i'll leave you to it um I'm scared. but um i know get ready no it's actually very very chill questions okay. um i should make them more interesting but anyway first question what's another beauty brand that you're currently loving right now i love gucci westman's um yeah Westman's product line. Too, yeah. her portfolio yeah. is just really beautiful a product um victoria beckham i use all of my own skincare. So it's really hard for me to say, you know, yeah. I, everybody, I I, there's so many people that make really great skincare. Um, and it's not that I wouldn't, you know, buy it. I'm just not using it. I, yeah. um, let's see. I do use, um, after each, you know, deep cleanse, I'll use like the K18 still. I yeah, use your I hair oil. Too. I use your pre-wash for shampoo. Like I oh. truly do. I'm not just saying that because I I'm really the podcast. Have, like it's I can um, show it to you now. And oh, um it means a lot. Yeah, and likewise, just, why I also love yours, I'm not saying this again because you're my podcast, but it's it's because it's so big. <laughs> so it just it lasts me a long time as well. Um and then you can cover it, you know, and then you can complement it with the oil. But it's important. It's important to be consistent. But anyway, I digress. That, that's that's not fire right. Okay, anyway, I can next okay, question. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, no, 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 that's my fault. <laughs> Uh, next okay. question. Uh, what or where is your happy place? Oh, that's a good one. 
Um, I love being at home. It's truly mm. my happy space. Um, I get a lot of, you know, I like going out and I like doing it, but my home is just like your sanctuary. Um, yeah. I am fortunate. Our business runs out of New York, but I live in Palm Beach. I moved here during pandemic or a little bit before pandemic, actually. And I can't imagine taking my kids now back to New York City. You know, yeah. we have like the ocean, the sunshine. It's yeah. it's truly a happy place. I'm looking at the ocean, you know, as we're like having this conversation. Yeah. And I'm looking at the rain Stop. and the grey brick <laughs> London. So uh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I've been to you know London what? twice this month, and I have one more trip. I have three trips to London this month. <laughs> so you know exactly what I'm feeling. I'm but sorry. at the same time, you know what? It forces sorry. me to travel. It keeps me. It keeps me seeing the yes, world, which is great. also a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing too. Uh, yeah. So my happy place is probably more like the airplanes. <laughs> That's probably oh, what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, but you know what? I, I I I say that. But London has its charm, and I do love it. And I'm oh, born and raised here. It's beautiful too. Um, well, my next Glad question you're is because we're moving yeah. there. I think. <laughs> are you going to move there? Are you going to move to London? I, Hopefully, I'm working. My kids are registered for September 2024. <gasps> I have oh. one boy left to get into a school. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Let me, um, that, that, I personally, so, I was thinking this earlier, like I would send my children to schools in London. Like, I, I mean, obviously I'm biased because I, I, I went to school here, but in North London or other areas, there's some amazing schools. And, uh, I think it's one of the best places to feel like you see the whole world. It's a global culture part and it's, but also global. you have very good education, very good education. And the mo- I think, I think the, the most impressive education around the world. I think I, I truly honestly believe that too. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think so. I, and think I think it beats out Switzerland as well. Exactly. And I think there's yeah. a lot more humility as well when it comes to students, young kids. And you have to be very careful where you put children at a very young age because they can grow around certain influences. And I think London has a very good balance of it all. So it's a global yeah, very, place. Very, it's a diverse place for my family. It's, yeah. you know, there's so much oh. to think about. Well, that's exciting. If you end up moving, you will hang out a lot. Yeah. So that's exciting. Um, yes, definitely. <laughs> and my, uh, my last question is, if you weren't currently creating a beauty brand, what would Hope be doing right now? I'd be an esthetician. I'd be working yeah. with skin on a table with a, you know, all of my products here, everything I want yeah. to do, solving other people's problems, um, obsessed with skin, giving them the most glowing, gorgeous skin in the world. So I'd be right back yeah, in my medical that. spa. Right there background yeah Yeah. oh i love that well hope it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you i want everyone to be able to continue following your journey so what is your social and the brand social as well that people can follow so instagram is at mother and mine is at hope smith I'll put all the links in the summary, including the website, Thank so people you. can just tap straight away. And uh, I look forward to continuing our conversation and friendship. And just want to say thank you again for keeping the space and being so um, such a pleasure to speak to. It's been really a great time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure to meet you.